<sighs> We're just doing the setup live, guys. Checking the audio. Getting it all situated. Where are we at? We're just doing the setup live, guys. Checking the audio. Getting it all situated. You're Ruby. Ugh. <sighs> Dust of the cobwebs from my eyeballs, man. Ain't got nothing cold to drink. Yet, yeah, I got a hot drink now. I got the blues. Hey, what is this? What is a. There's a Twitch going on. And my headphones. What was that? I think that was Bat Sky Art. Or Bat Star. Bat shit. Some stuff. Bat Star. Ugh. Trying to wake up here, guys. Coffee. It's good. The Insta stuff. <laughs> so something that's been serving me so far this week is uh, I get home from work. Let's let's have a little chat. Let's have a little chat. Let's have a little chat. Face blog. I get home from work at like uh, five thirty. And then I wolf down dinner. And then I, uh, bah, 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 bah. I go to bed. And when I wake up, I'm here with you guys. After, you know, about an hour, make, you know, I make the thumbnail, do all the fun stuff. And then, uh, we get going. Uh,. Pop out chat. That's what we want. Okay. Ideally, I want to start at 10. But I've been waking up at 8. So we start at 9. But ideally, I want to start the show at 10. But if I wake up early, we'll do that. In the last two days, seems like 8 o'clock. So, might be kismet. To be doing these at night. But don't be surprised if on occasion it's 10 or 11. You know. Because uh, so let's see. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. I'm not I'm not done chatting with y'all. I go uh you know um I sleep from Let's just say 6.15. We'll go 6 o'clock. I sleep from 6 until 8. That's 2 hours. And then I go 2 to 7. Which is 5 hours. I'm getting 7 hours of sleep. In a, in a rotation. It's interesting. <sighs> okay. Oh, let's uh, toggle that recording there. It's looking good. Things are looking good on this. Turn up the background music a little bit. Uh, boom. 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 Wake up, Photoshop. Photoshop's having trouble waking up, too. All right, back at it. <sighs> Finally, 
That's a, that's a long, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, crazy with the music there. This is the the most interesting part of the stream is, is getting comfortable for the usually it takes me about a half hour to figure out where I want to sit where where I have my tablet. I mean, I paint in between then, but I'm usually fidgety the first 30 minutes. But, it's only been a few hours. I think it might not take long to get comfortable. I think I'm almost ready. How are you guys today? I hope you guys are doing good. Hey, hey, TJ's back. Nice catch. Uh, how are you doing today, Bam? I am doing good, TJ. How about yourself? How's it all treating you? We're just jumping in tonight, getting this one done. I have uh, a bunch of cool ideas for portraits coming up. I think that's going to be my shtick for a while. Oh, we need to go back to our brush. This was, this was our digital sketchbook hyper detail brush. We need a painterly portrait brush. 178. That's right. You know, 178. Can't go wrong with it. Oh, yeah, we can back up too. It's not the same painting technique as last night. And we need a new layer. Uh, night to block. That, that way we, we can check our progress, you know. But we're going to group these layers if we can. That way we can move them together. Let's see. Good. CJ says good. Just got done with work and a couple hours ago. So getting ready for some dinner. Nice. What you guys, what you guys cooking? What's, what's on the grill tonight? To turn this down, turn this up. Awesome. Now, see, now I can see the chat over there. I see the chat over here. And we're recording. Uh oh. Oh no. This weird thing, this weird artifact with my arrow tells me that I have a video card issue. That it's low. Okay, it resolved itself. Good. I just had to click away. Homemade mac and cheese. Outstanding. An American staple. That's good stuff. That's hearty. That's a hearty meal. Oh, it might be getting close to switching the brush to the round brush. The thing with this brush is it leaves these 
jagged edges. So let's see what else we got for for the second day so we can clean that up. <laughs> um, where's just my brushes, guys? There we go. What do we want to use today? Something with some softer edges. Ooh. What's this guy look like? No. And the jagged's on the other side. Like a round brush. What's this guy do? This is the way. Avoid those. Yeah, it's cold up here, lols. Oh yeah, we'll cold down here. We're gonna we're gonna get down to forty three degrees tonight. Uh, that's cold for us. It's still warm for me. It's still warm. Ah, oh, but I, I was thinking today about portraits. Different things that I can do. Because I don't want to, I don't want to do Marvel or like Overwatch, anything like that. I don't want to really do fan art. Thought about doing like, like, uh, Portraits of missing people. And we could talk about the missing people. And I could leave contact information. I think that might be interesting. If done right. I gotta see. Let's make sure, you know, it's tasteful. And doesn't come across wrong. But I was thinking about that today. It's like, you know, that's a way. That's, a, that's something you can do to help out. You know, do something good. But I'm on the fence about it. And then... I want to do another series called... I wanted to do this for a long time, but I never really had the... The skills before. I do something called Art and History. Where I get my interpretation of history. And we study the art of the time, but we talk about, you know, the history of at the time. Not art history, but art and history. So those, those are what I got planned. I just don't have enough time. Not enough time. How cold is it up there? What temps are you guys rocking? Are you, do you get snow where you're at in Oregon? Or are you on the south end? I'm sure all of Oregon gets snow. But I think... What is that, that You got that giant river there. If I recall correctly, the temperature is vastly different than the rest of the state. The river. It could be wrong. I mean, I only I only drove through it like twice. That's kind of like claiming to be an expert, but staying at a Holiday Inn Express once. What's my opacity? Tie? My opacity is twenty. No, no matter. No, eh, no wonder why it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything. It's because I'm not. Why? Why won't you get in there, color? The value. So check this out while you're here. You're going to find this neat. Okay, so we bring the color back. And let's, let's come up here. We'll bring this up here. We're going to drop this down to color. Okay, cool. We got our brush tool. So I could come up 
Let's just grab his arm right here. Color. But a lot of people think I'm just it's gonna be black and white. It's not. It's not gonna be black and white. Now let's grab the blue. And you know, this is just part of it. It it takes takes a, a couple of layers like this. But just like that. Hey, he's he's a little orange there. <laughs> I have to lighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna make his hat blue too. I don't like the color of that hat. And let's uh, make the bass pop. You know, you take some creative liberties with the colors. <coughs> but yeah, that gives you a, that gives you a basic basic idea. A little bluer over here. Let's see. Yeah, it was cold here. It was actually pretty warm today, considering. 52. Nice. But it's been in the negatives here before. Oh, the negatives are awesome. You know, it gets so cold sometimes, like, like once you get into negative territory, like, it, it gets dry, and it doesn't feel as cold as the 20s, if that makes any sense. Like, the cold knocks out the humidity once you, once you drop below zero. Let's see, in the valley, it's not as bad. On the other side of the mountain... Is the desert it gets colder yeah deserts get brutally cold that's what makes deserts dangerous is uh, you get you get hot in the daytime and then you get cold at night that's how you get that's how, how people die body like make up your mind temperature I need this grayscale back And then we need the layer. 20s and negative 10 feels the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's weird. So I kind of dig, I kind of dig the, the negatives. It's like, eh, negatives, whatever. Now you start getting into the negative 20s. Then you, then you got to. A situation. <laughs> I've experienced negative 20 a couple of times. You burn through a lot of firewood. Now, this is a problem with blurry photographs. Like, is is this a fish pen or his fingers? It is his fingers. It's more of his. I thought there was only like three fingers here. But there's a whole hand there. We need to fix that right now before we forget. this history stuff out of the way see I thought this right here was like a fin and he had fingers right there 
but I was I was mistaken. <laughs> Photos do weird things. You see, you can kind of see through his photo, or uh, through his finger. You can see grass behind his fingers. It's interesting. Is he's got a ghost hand? Uh, but there is a huge difference between eating. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. And I don't understand. So your body temperature is like what ninety ninety eight point one degrees. Or is that a radio station? Maybe it's 91.8 degrees. In either case, your body temperature is 90. You think you would be comfortable at 90. But if it's 80 degree, 89 degrees, I'm hot. But my temperature is higher than that. So that doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't make sense at all. It's like the body wants to be warmer than it is outside. Yeah, 90, okay, 98, that's right. 98.1, That I think that's also a radio station in my area. So it's like, is my brain mixing stuff up again? It's done that. It wouldn't be the first time. He's holding that bass like he's playing guitar, man. What's it typing at me? Yeah, it makes no sense to me either. TJ says, I prefer cold. I love waking up in the morning to ice. Air feels fresher. Oh yeah, the crisp air. And you can see it. See, see your breath. I miss that. I miss that a lot. Yeah, next year, next year, I think I'll be doing a trip up to Boston. Okay, a year from February, I think. I want to go right in the middle of all the nastiness. I could get my passport and go go to Quebec City. That would be interesting. I've been up there once. I've always wanted to go back.
We're going to take a break from the hand. Not quite there, but at least it kind of looks like the hand now. I understand what I'm working with. Yeah, it looks proportional to the other hand. This forearm would go back like that. Okay, that looks good. Uh, I've always wanted to visit New Jersey. I got a friend that lives up there. Uh, that's where my mom was born, and I haven't had the chance to go with her yet. Oh, she's a Jersey girl, huh? Yeah, Jersey's, uh, Jersey's an interesting place. I make fun of Jersey a lot, but it's kind of with love. Jersey's got a lot of personality. And they're not as arrogant as, like, um, Bostonians. But Jersey smells funny. I mean, I'm not going to lie about that. Where is this artifact coming from? Got to be a visible one. There we go. Let's see. Oh, see, now I haven't been to Alaska. Two states I haven't been to. Alaska is one of them. Bet you can't guess the other. I went to Alaska quite a few times when I was younger, but I don't remember much. I also want to go there. Yeah, I want to go to Alaska too. I wanted to go to Alaska and see uh, an orca and a grizzly. That's what I want to do up there. And maybe visit Hart. It <laughs> just cuts. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. How'd you guess? How did you ever guess? <laughs> yep, Alaska and Hawaii. I've been to all the continentals. And you know what? So is my dog. I get, I get, my dog Mila, it's like, I'll hear people talk, they'll, be, they'll talk about all the states they've been to, they are like, I've been to Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Pennsylvania, and New York, and Connecticut, and it's like, wow, my, my dog's been to more states than you, <laughs> my dog's been to more states than most people, I think that's kind of neat. Oh, she's had, my dog's had some adventures, man. For a dog. She's seen, she's seen the factories where the chicken gets processed. I bet she still dreams about that. <laughs> she's, she probably tells the other dogs, she's like, she's like, no, no, seriously, there's this magical land where there's, Thousands of chickens. They're not even cooked. They're fresh. <laughs> it's a magical land. Let's see. My dad lived in Alaska for a long time. He worked for the fish and wildlife up there. And he has awesome home footage of bears, orcas, all sorts of crazy stuff. That is awesome. That That's, that's the life up there, you know? Oh, this is the time of year where the gators are sunbathing. So, like, typically when you see pictures of of gators in Florida, it comes from the winter time. So, hopefully in a couple of weeks here, I get some, some photos of the gator. Mm-hmm. Different kind of wildlife. We got bears down here, too. We got black bears and brown bears. I 
I want to, if I was in Alaska though, I think I'd want to stay six months. I want to see, you know, the bears stocking up for, for a long winter and they'll be up and about. And then I want to, I want to stay and see, you know, the, the, the midnight sun. Or and that, maybe a year, maybe a year in Alaska. My, your brother still lives up there. Oh, s still lives up there in Alaska or Florida? I remember the gators scared the crap out of me as a kid. I was only in Florida a couple weeks, but I saw tons. Yeah, they're they're pretty gnarly. They'll still scare you if you get close enough. But I got into photography. Um, I. I was taking a photography class in school and I had one of those little Sony cyber shots. This is before uh, phones or cameras on smartphones. I had, you know, just this little, little cyber shot and I went down Alligator Alley and I saw Gator. Uh, well, we got to go into story time for this one. Okay, so, so one of those little cyber shots. And uh, I went down Alligator Alley and I took this back dirt road that followed a canal and drove up. And I was like, okay, for my photography class, I'm going to get some good pictures of some alligators. It's the time. And uh, I see, you know, gators out on the canal just like cruising. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. So I stopped the car, put it in park, and I get out and, you, you know, I, I go around to the side of that car and I'm walking towards the bank. And I'm taking pictures, and I've got this this uneasy feeling about me. Just something isn't quite right. And so I stop, and I keep real still, and and I'm looking around, and probably about six feet of me from me, I see this perfect circle. And I go, what is that? Uh, you know, I thought it was like uh, I thought it was like a plant. I don't know. I don't know what I thought it was, but I still kept sitting and I, and I looked at it. It reminded me of that scene in Jurassic Park. I mean, I, I, like I wasn't that close, but as I started to figure out what it was, when the T Rex is when they shine the flashlight and the T Rex eye and the pupil dilates, as soon as my brain processed that it was an eyeball, everything else came came to focus, and there was like a 13 foot gator five feet away from me, and it blinked. And so I slowly tiptoed backwards and got into got into my car and I had some money in my bank account and I was like, I think I've gotta get a professional camera, you know, one where I can zoom in. <laughs> so that's that's what I got a Nikon. Let's see. I saw tongues. When we went to see the space shuttle get launched, they had tons in the canals near NASA. Oh, man. I miss... I kick myself in the butt every day because I missed the last shuttle launch. I was living down here for it. Something happened. I think it might have got delayed or something. But I never saw the, the shuttle launch. I've seen SpaceX. Yeah, heck with that, Wolves. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, well, you know, they're, uh, yeah, you get close enough, they'll get you. If you get in their perimeter, they go into snack mode. That's, that's essentially what they do. I was going to say, if you don't bother them, they won't bother you, but that's, uh, that's not entirely true. <laughs> they, they are opportunists. They don't actively pursue you, but you can accidentally step right on top of one because they blend in so well. But we have a problem with pythons now. Gators have actually become the heroes because they're the only things that take out these pythons. I mean, pythons are invasive. They're the same pythons that you can get at a pet store. 
people, their snakes get too big, so they just release them. And now we have a major python problem. Something's going on with this shirt I'm not liking. What is going on here? Oh yeah, yeah, iguanas are bad, but well, we have open like if you have a like a pellet gun or an air gun, you're supposed to just shoot them. Not even call a local area, just shoot them. You can't shoot them with like a real gun. But if you, if you got a pellet or an air gun, you're supposed to just shoot them. You're authorized to use deadly force for the iguanas. That's how bad they are. They literally just like fall out of the trees. They, you know, to me, they, I don't know. They're, I think they're cool. But I get having to, you know, off them. It took me a while to see the light. You know, I argued with a lot of people about it everybody's like oh well they're an invasive species it's like everything in florida is invasive nothing like the history of florida wildlife is it's it's constantly changing you know and that's even before we got here you know because everything can adapt to florida you know because it's it's tropical that's all tropics so i kind of brushed off that argument but then uh see so you got a lot of the houses are on canals and you have a seawall and the iguanas like to burrow to lay their eggs and what they'll do is they'll, they'll dig behind people's seawalls and then the seawall falls into the canal and that causes ecological trouble inside of the canal for all the other fish not to mention like tens of thousands of dollars of property damage and it's like okay i can see that point you know, it's sad. But I, I leave them alone. I take pictures of them. You know, but I don't I don't get mad at people like, oh, you killed the iguanas. Because, like, if I owned a house and, you know, I'd, you know, I'd probably be like, hey, get off my lawn, iguana. If I know that it's going to, you know, cost a lot of money. Yeah, I live pretty close on the Gulf Coast. I live, I live, uh, what is it, west side, I live on the west coast, man, I tell a lot of people that, it's like, yeah, I'm on the west coast, <laughs> little place called Tampa, Tampa, California, you never heard of it. Yeah, I'm on the I'm on the boring side of Florida, which is nice, you know, because they can relax, feel safe, and then if I ever want to go go on an adventure, you know, it's just a two-hour drive to Orlando and it's a two-hour drive to Miami. It works out pretty nice. And then I like to, uh, well, I haven't in years, but I was watching the Hawaii Surf Championship today. And I was like, oh, that's right. So was, uh, I'm getting in better shape. And it's like, man, I bet I can surf again. I used to have really bad hip problems. And it, it took about 10 years to heal. And now, now my hips feel great. And uh, I was like, I bet I could, and through the hip pain, I was able to surf. I was like, wow, I wonder what surfing would be like now, now that my legs don't hurt like they used to. So I'm, I'm thinking about doing it again. And that's like, my surf spot is about four hours away. 
So maybe my goal is, uh, you know, build up my upper body and then in, next October, I get hurricane season's best time to surf in Florida. Like even if there's not a hurricane out there, you just got, you got a lot better sets. Oregon, do you surf up there in Oregon? So it's weird, like in the lower right of the video, I'm painting this creepy spider. Like, I've always been a fan of the aesthetic of, like, Lovecraftian stuff. And, you know, I, I, I do the lore. Like, I've watched Cliff Nut videos about, you know, like Cthulhu and all of that stuff. Um, but recently, my phone got shut off, so I've been downloading uh, audiobooks of Lovecraft. And it's warping my mind. And so now I see, now I look over it, I think of like, y y you know, the mouth of madness. I look at some of the art. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's like, it's like that book. <laughs> it's creeping me out. Yeah, people surf up, up here. Oh, yeah, you guys got some of the best waves in the world. You're in California. But it's definitely not as common as it is there. Well, yeah, you guys, our waters are warm. Like Northern Pacific, you really gotta love surfing. <laughs> to surf in the Northern Pacific. Oh, uh, that's, that's from what I hear. I've never been in the Pacific Ocean. Um, but I hear that water is cold. But I've also... I've surfed in New Hampshire and 40 degree water. 50. Probably 50 degree water. It felt like 40. That's actually where I learned how to surf. Is Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Well, that, that's when I first stood up on the surfboard. Is Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. I got my surfboard, though, in, in North Carolina. I don't have it anymore, though. I need a new one. Uh, I love swimming in the ocean here. I think I'm one of the only ones, lols. Yeah, I'm, I've been watching a lot of deep sea stuff, and I, I'm starting to think people are justified being terrified of the ocean. <laughs> There's some creepy stuff down there. You'd see like, when you guys get, don't you guys get like the great whites and stuff up there a lot? You guys get the real nasty guys. On occasion, way out there on the Gulf, cruising up to northern waters, there'll be a great white spotted off off the Florida coast, but it's usually just passing through. He's like us. He's like, this place is too hot. I'm just, you know, cruising the Gulf, coming from Africa, and I'm boogie on up to small New England town and, you know, terrorize the local sheriff. He'd stout. I just gotta double check when I switch cameras. So I've, I've done that before. I've, I've done story time and not changed the camera back and gone back to painting it. <laughs> People just see my confused face, my dog head tilt, because I do different things. Let's see what you're typing at me. Uh, yeah, my dad met a surfer that got attacked by a great white. 
on the coast here. Whew. Oh, man. I can't imagine being attacked by a great white and then getting back out there. Yeah, we don't have a ton of sharks, but the ones that we do have are massive. Yeah, we have a ton of sharks, but most of them are small. We get this weird thing that, that trips me out that science doesn't give me appropriate answers for. They just, It's one of these things they just mention in passing. It's like every 10 years, there'll be an inner species school of sharks. Like all the sharks together. You know, you got uh, uh, hammerheads, black tip sharks, bull sharks. And they're just in groups, massive groups of like 20 or 30 in formation swimming up and down the Gulf Coast. And it's like, if it was a common occurrence, yeah, okay, we can explain that. But it just happens like every 10 years or so, and then it stops for years, and then all of a sudden you'll see it again. It's like, can uh, can we get science on this, please? <laughs> you know, are they banding together? Are, are the sharks plotting something? Are they going to evict us out of the water? It's like, we need to find out. Yeah, sometimes uh, nature can be creepy. Throws us a curveball. The fun part about painting is, especially like clothes, is you get interesting, interesting folds in clothing that present a challenge to figure out. Is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, going to the knuckle. Cool. I eyeballed that pretty accurate. Not perfect. But I'm paying attention, and that's that's it leads right to this knuckle. Our octopi scare me too. You can tell they are really smart. Yes. And that is actually a good time to pull something up. Your domain requests cannot be served at this time. Error sent to the team. Oh, hell no. Ugh. I thought my website was down. Or that if it was down, that might have been a good thing. So I suspect in two million years. But okay, so it's weird. I did this painting and I mentioned it to you last time, but I didn't go into detail about it about this this octopus and that they uh the octopus come up on the land and they take like long after we'll ex extinct they start discovering you know our kind of land masses and that inspires them to you know kind of migrate out of the water and i call the heir to the throne and then a couple of years later like i did this in like 2015 or 2016 and then a couple of years later all these stories came out of like octopuses escaping tanks and I, i'm sure these octopuses did this forever but nobody really talked about it and uh the octopus is coming coming out of out of the ground so i'm gonna go ahead and throw up the brbs 
and I am gonna play that here for you real quick while I refill my uh, drinks. Let's get let's get it set up here so that we can we can do that. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Bam BFX Art. I am Joshua. This is Bam BFX Arts, and uh, it's Artcast Podcast, not Chili and the Cheese. This is a special treat. This is an old painting going back to 2015, and um, something very near and dear to my heart, something very creepy. Um, unfortunately, I didn't record the line work. That is missing footage, but we're going to watch this painting unfold. And this was probably the first digital painting I was really proud of. And we've got footage of the Beverly Hillbillies in here for some reason. Chili and the Cheese was a program that I did with, that was kind of a, a gorilla edit, gorilla editing. And... Um, and take sound bites, things like that. But, but that's besides the point. What I um, really want to talk about with this painting is um, so as I was painting it, you know, the concept is in the times after people, you know, say human society collapsed um, and there was ruins. Maybe people are still around where maybe they're not, but the cities are completely abandoned and over eons the octopuses octopi octopus they start venturing out of the sea and taking over the land and i imagine you, you know how they would discover fire and things like that and become a, a, a half land half ocean uh, species just because they are super smart and super weird um it's creepy and then or, as time went on i found more and more of my digital art um things started happening like like i said i did this in 2015 and then in 2017 was really creepy all these articles started coming out like in uh, new zealand and in uh, wales octopuses were starting to crawl out of the oceans and onto the land and also octopuses started started escaping from aquariums all around 2017 um you didn't hear much about it before i can't find much about it before uh 2017 but this painting and this concept i did in 2015 so it kind of kind of creeped me out and then in, in 2016 I had more paintings that are just kind of, kind of, uh, prophetic. And it's, it's weird because like when you paint, like, and, and I found this both in like the watercolors and, um, and traditional painting, but for me, it's more so in the digital because I could really immerse myself in it. Like I got my face like right up on the, on the screen, um, in a lot of how I paint is, you know, imagining different shapes inside of the details. That's what digital sketchbook is about is like, I'll be working details on a main painting and I'll see something else that looks interesting. And then I can elaborate and paint off of that. And that's why I love digital, um, as, as my favorite medium so far, I'm starting to really enjoy watercolor too, but yeah, absolutely creep me out having uh having all of a sudden two years later a year and a half later all these articles come out about the octopi rising up and i really enjoy drawing water i was just looking looking at the the water to the to the right there and that's something i find myself getting lost in a lot now over here, like on the side or in the upper right, I got a little bit of footage from uh, BBC 
of uh, of of an octopi walking. Yeah, I think this is in New Zealand. There'll be a link to the video. It's got um, narration, a good classic BBC narration, which uh, it's a three minute video, very entertaining. And I'm also gonna gonna write about this over over on the blog, which is which is gonna be fun. Um, as far as you know, the the painting technique. I, this is when I think this is the first piece I was really starting to get the hang of getting a solid shape and, and details in there. And I think the coffee had something to do with that. I, I can't be positive, but I'm pretty sure it's the coffee. Yeah, it's a little bit that's a little bit more gorilla back in the day with my videos and, and I gotta start start getting back to that a little bit. Um Another thing, I, I, I was looking at octopus reference um, as I was as I was doing the skin, and I did a combination of just you know normal normal painting technique and um, some textures too, like like on the rock. This is this painting's got everything it's, I like. It's got water, um, it's got rock where I use rock texture, I use skin texture on um charlie the octopus here we'll just call him charlie i think i had another name for him but i can't can't remember at the moment um yeah just just a mixed bag and the uh the separation of the skin with the kind of gilly looking thing up there i was i was kind of fascinated with that and i learned to you know smooth the thing that looks like an ear um, this isn't a real octopus. It's elements of different things because, you know, I'm thinking in the future, this is, you know, like 10,000 years in the future and these things are evolving to leave the ocean or, or, you know, be in between worlds. And that's why it's called heir to the throne after the people are gone. I think if, if people were to disappear, um, probably be monkeys, you know, apes that, that take over and, and evolve into something like humans because of the opposable thumbs, but anything outside of, uh, uh, y you know, monkey ape, cousin species, if anything else were to evolve to the state, hello phone, if anything else were to evolve to the state of, uh, uh people or close, it would probably be octopuses for their intelligence and they might be able to get around the opposable thumb thing with um the tentacles um yeah because they're very dexterous i mean they can open jars escape out of aquariums they're they're fascinating definitely and and in the blog and in the description of this video I'm going to have some, some references where you can learn about them. You know, from panspermia, some people think that, that their eggs were on, you know, a comet and, and came from another planet. And the way these things behave in their advanced evolution is highly unlikely, but it doesn't surprise me. I also think this is a first piece where I used... You know color out overlays like i tried different colors out oh i brought in my favorite tech yeah that's right my favorite textures in this one you just saw me drop that there working in different layers i got way too many layers on this one but you know i can work on the the work on charlie there opposite of uh the background and just go back and forth go to town try different things one of the first ones where I learned to use the mouse wheel to just scroll through the different overlay options and find out what works best. Um, I remember too also also being really really focused on my lighting. But yeah, if you don't mind, drop in the comments either on the blog or on the on the video. Have you ever um, have you ever painted something that? like creep you out down the road and like something happened that was just like spot on with the concept that you came up with 
or, or, or what weird stories do you have about your art? I definitely want to know. Let's let's talk about it. Leave a comment. Oh yeah, we did. We got the tiger kind of stripe thing going in there. The chameleon stuff is really creepy with the uh, uh, with the octopi. I mean, I could just talk about octopi forever. They're just they're just so so weird. But hey, listen. I mean, I got I got prints available for this. And I'm writing a corresponding blog. If you're already on the blog, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're watching on YouTube, down below that first link is going to take you to the blog. And you can see my display, my description. You'll also be able to, you know, look at the prints. See if there's something that you're into. I got a high-end metal print that looks fantastic. Um... I've gotten lots of prints, not of this particular one, but the, the prints are high quality. Oh, oh, oh my god, sorry about your eardrum. Wow, sorry about your eardrums there. I don't mind her hurting from that. <laughs> God, we're on such an exciting jam. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so who's that guy? There's a YouTuber that used to write for Crack, and now he just does like he makes videos for his blog, and he told this story. There's a uh, in an aquarium, there was this octopus, and it didn't like one of the aquarium attendants. And it would always, like, like poke out of the cage and throw stuff at her. I forget the exact story. But, yeah, they, they recognize people and pick favorites, and they're escape artists. And the videos of them just mimicking anything fascinates me. And then my understanding is that their um, their brain is like their whole body. It's like their neural network goes everywhere. Oh, I reused the same song. I'm not listening to that mess again. That's why I want to. I've been redoing these videos with more, you know, just kind of basic music. That way I'm not constantly having to, having to change, change the volume. I like the, the ambient stuff. I was, I was a different kind of editor back then. Getting reacclimated here. Uh, where is. Okay, I'm on the right thing. We need one. Photoshop. There we go. And we'll pull back up the chat. Let's see. Be right back. Dinner is done. Enjoy the mac, my friend. The mac and cheese. Okay.
That's funny. Just, just a little subtlety goes from looking, you know, angry and upset to to a smirk. Just, just a subtle change of the line. Fascinating and or interesting. Oh, and you look at this angle, this angle's off. It looks like so we gotta do some neck adjustments here. Ah, man, my cable's all twisted. What is this? Is this the game controller? This thing cable just ripped, ripped my neck. What's really going on here, baby? So we got issues with the face.
Why'd I go 20? 20 is too light. Okay, so something we gotta do here is I gotta save the original one from yesterday, you know, to show the progress for the thumbnail. That's something I forgot to do. Let me grab this, move this over here. I don't think I've saved all my all my I am not recording. Did I record all night? Um, is a sketch? Come on, all the way up. Okay, how long is this? It should be. 29 minutes. Oh no. 30 minutes? What happened? I must have pressed spacebar. Oh, uh, good thing. Uh, that's that's why I'm glad I'm doing this on YouTube. I can I can download the video. Ah. Uh. That means this one's going to be in 1080. Ugh. That's better than nothing. Man. I, I picked switching over to YouTube at the right time. It's been a long time since I've done that. Where did, uh... Hopefully this doesn't wreck my stuff. I must, I must have hit spacebar when I switched from story time. That's a bummer. But, not a big deal. That is about 40 minutes. So, we are at 118. So like the first hour. See if I've done this on Twitch, the download always doesn't always work on Twitch. And it would have been and the quality is a lot crappier too. You know, a lot of times you make decisions at the right time. And what were we doing? There go back. Oh. 
Oh yeah, it's pretty good progress there. So we need to turn this off. We need to turn that off. Go through the list. Like this. Oh, we need that guy. Don't need that guy. Get rid of the monolith. Buy Jenna. Buy Elvira. Buy that one. There we go. And then let's do. Oh wait, 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 wait. Let's do control B. So now we go. Crop. No, 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 no. It's, uh, <sighs> there's an artifact over there. So I'm do that. Control Shift I delete. Oh, quit being temperamental. Delete. Deselect. You gotta be some picky Photoshop. Still they get rid of the artifact. Okay. Really? 50% is like that. That's 10% then. Oh, yeah, that's a large file, man. Oh, all that trouble, and we already did it. <laughs> all that AG1. That's right. I did it for the thumbnail. <laughs> All that effort, and I didn't even need to do it. Now I'm paranoid about my recording. Ah, yeah. I merged the wrong two layers.
<sighs> rabble, rabble, rabble. There we go. Awesome. Of course, I shouldn't even be worried about the recording now because I'm downloading the whole, whole video. Think about brightening stuff up. That way, when we do the color, he's a little less orange. A little bit more space between here and there, and the hat isn't as low. Just kind of get the shape for now. We'll worry about the eye in a moment. So. Yeah, the eye's not the problem, it's the hat.
and bring it down to 30. That's better. Getting there. That's the problem with bad photos. We're out of focus photos. It's actually a good composition. Give myself some guy. Ah, Photoshop. I don't think that's Photoshop doing that. I think that's my tablet. Because Photoshop knows what's up. Tablet is like, what's going on? I don't know. There's a little gap here. Yeah, that's about right. Problem is, is there's there's a little drop shadow going on that's screwing me up with the glass. You can see that there's a rim shadow, and I keep confusing that with the actual lens. Like this. this seems about right. Let's uh, do a little bit of measuring here.
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. oh well. Wow. I think we got the ears right. How did that happen? It always seems to happen. Maybe I'm not. Let's mash up the shoulders. Ah, hooly dooly. No. Well. Let's try that. And somehow I got twisted. Quiet, you. What is the deal? Why? Why is it doing that? Why is it doing that? Photoshop. So I got the distance pretty close. It's just, how did I untilt his head? How did that happen? We're gonna do like this. Oh, I remember. I was, uh, I was lazy. I did indicators and I didn't check it. I could did placeholders and I just went with it. Well, late in the game do it over again so we're just gonna own our mistake and move on Now we have to contend with the purple. That's our punishment. Purple's hard to get rid of too. It's like the red pen was getting graded.
I was off by about a quarter of an inch. I'm impressed though, it, for being that far off, it did look like them. I got the shape of the face pretty good. The nose was off. I'm not going to hate myself too much for that. That's not horrible. It's just the eyes. I mean, I know what I did. I remember doing it now. I was gonna beep at me again. <laughs> it's gonna punish me. How dare you change the brush? How dare you? Up, spotted the the hat gap. That's good. Measure twice, cut once. Yep, I made his ear too big. Rabble. Both made his ear too big and too small. Hey, welcome back. I just got done grading myself. <laughs> And I failed. Now I get myself. Only problem was this section really right here. This was off. You can see I'm off uh, about a quarter of an inch. But this side was pretty good. I got the shape of the face pretty accurate. But for some reason, I made his I made his face straight. I had to tilt the head. But yeah, nose is off. This is off. All this side was gravy. It happens. And I forgot to, like, I put indicator lines for the eyes, and I forgot to double check it and move forward is what happened. But you know, it's it's all it's all part of the process.
Oh yeah, bring it back down up here. Yeah, I should have done this earlier. If if I got too much further, I would have had to. That would have been more devastating. I would have had some real issues. Like especially when you get to the color layer, because in the when you do the color layer, you'll really notice it. And then, then you're not just correcting one layer, you're correcting two layers. And I punished myself by doing the outline on my blocking layer. So now I got to get rid of all this purple, um, the old fashioned way, by painting over it. Purple's hard to get rid of. But I might leave just a little bit in there. Just for some pizzazz. Oh, well, the color layer, too, will, will hide a lot of it. It'll, it'll add to some interesting artifacts. Yeah, yeah, this is my dad. Yeah, it probably probably looks familiar. <laughs> it's a lot of the same features.
Uh, probably a few weeks ago. I'm not sure. Besides doing portraits and he was like, hey, you want to paint this guy? And he didn't. He was joking. And, and now here we are. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't want to. Sometimes I take jokes seriously. Oh yeah, as well it's you know, Florida. Florida is it's, it's always fishing time down here. It never stops. Yeah, a little bit. A couple hours away. Yeah, that's, that's why I came back down from Colorado. And everybody's, everybody's getting older, so it's like, eh. Be closer in case people need me. Okay, let's not make them look like Skeletor, dude. <laughs> there you go. Now it's looking more like them. And I really, yeah, I traced it. It was crooked like that. I think the glass is distorted in his eyes. Now it's always good to be close to family. Yeah, well, well, I'm fortunate, you know. It's good to have good family. That's why, you know, it's fortunate. Because I know a lot of people aren't as, aren't as privileged, I come to find out. Yeah, getting old's weird. Cause I, uh, like I said I was in Colorado for about ten years, and then Hurricane Irma hit, and I raced from Colorado. I drove from Colorado down to Florida in like 32 hours because I was scared of Irma and uh, that's when I realized it was like man if, if something were to happen I'm just way too far away to do anything you know everybody is so it's like alright and then as soon as I can I'll move down a couple years later it's like yep well, I'm moving down to Florida I got in touch with my old boss, got my old job back. And now I deal with the heat. <laughs> uh. 
that's why that's why I'm I'm pushing to get my own art thing off the ground, get my practice in while I can, because you know doing the pools it's uh what I call a livable wage, and you can't live off of a livable wage. And I want to be able to, uh, you know, in the winter time, go up and visit Colorado and New England. That's why I want to be a YouTube superstar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, me, me too. Me too. Certainly, certainly thankful. Oh yeah, what is it? Anderson Cooper. He had he had me spooked. Everybody on the news was like, "The the surge is gonna be thirty four feet tall." And I was like, "That that's larger than a house." <laughs> it's like I told my work. I was like. Uh, I was in the middle of the shift. Yeah, I was working at a call center, and at the call center they had TVs running the whole time, and that's all they were doing was showing the news. I went to my supervisor. I was like, "I I, I gotta go." <laughs> uh, like I raced home and grabbed survival tools, and then driving into Florida, I came in right as the hurricane was ending, and it was like Mad Max. And there was no gas, and and I happened to sneak in with the with the lineman into a gas station, and I just zipped in and filled up my pump, and they were like, "Gas is for linemen only," and I was like, "Oh, sorry, I already filled." <laughs> I got in my car and drove off. <laughs> yeah, there there was a lot of uh, a lot of luck on my side on that on that commute. But yeah, I've, I've done a few hurricanes. I actually kind of enjoy them. It's, it's exciting. And now that I'm living back down here, if we get a hurricane, I was like, I ain't evacuating nothing. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine a hurricane. We get some nasty storms here, but nothing like that. Yeah, they're wild. Um, but what's worse than a hurricane is a tornado. Like a hurricane, you got like 10 days to see it coming. <laughs> you got a little bit of planning time with a hurricane. Whereas like if you're in Tornado Alley, you're just minding your own business. And all of a sudden it's like the sirens go off and it's like, oh, I've got two minutes to act. You know, there's no putting up shutters for a tornado. Of course, that would be a really neat invention. Shutters for uh, Tornado Alley. We have the technology now. Where you have it tapped into your phone. And the, the steel shutters just drop down. I'm surprised that isn't a thing yet. 
than 30 seconds, you can be buttoned up. You can have it connected to your Wi-Fi. So if you're out of town, you get an alert on your phone. It's like, hey, there's a tornado within two miles of your house. And you can go boop. They're neat. Uh, Kansas is neat. If you drive across uh, 70, Highway 70, the first couple of weeks of June, if you catch it, you can see them because Kansas is so flat. You can see them 20 miles away on the horizon on both sides. And, you, you know, the houses are so far apart and towns are so far far apart I mean they're not doing doing damage to anybody they they are fascinating to look at um, and you can see them coming where tornadoes are really dangerous is in uh, places like uh, West Tennessee and Alabama and Louisiana Mississippi because you got a bunch of trees around and you don't see them coming a lot of the bad things happen in Kansas at night when you can't see it. But Oklahoma, that's what, Oklahoma and Kansas is where you get all the cool footage and you got time to react. But those other places, all of a sudden you just see trees and limbs flying all over the place and it's right on top of you. There's nothing you can do except like dive in a ditch. Yeah, Twister. Twister was a good movie, man. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Of course, I haven't seen it in a long time. I don't know if it's stood the test of time. But you, I have the soundtrack, and I listen to the soundtrack like crazy. Here we go. Now it really starts to look, it looked like him before, but now it's really looking like him. But yeah, tornadoes are definitely worth worth seeing in Kansas and Oklahoma. Because it kind of puts, like, if you want a life perspective <laughs> and realize how small you are, you actually are, you kind of appreciate things. I mean, it, it's tragic. I've driven through, uh, I've driven through behind a tornado and seen a few times in Kansas. Uh, the one that hit Joplin, Missouri, I saw saw the aftermath of that, and I saw that it was like eight months after it happened, and the town was still just completely devastated. And it's, uh, I mean, that that part is, is sad and tragic. But I don't know, something about me is like forces of nature, it's just like, There's, there's a weird appreciation there. Or maybe not appreciation, but respect. I think it's... For my psyche, they're, they're less devastating than like a... A human tragedy. Because human tragedies are preventable. But yeah, I like I like storms. I like being out in storms. 
lightning. And I'm, I'm crazy like that. Uh, yeah, forest fires, kind of a different animal. Because that's kind of a mixture. Because, yeah, it's a force of nature. A lot of them are done by lightning. But these days, it seems like uh, a lot of them are people being careless with, with fire or intentional. And then you got... Maybe climate change or something too. Fires are the one thing that I probably won't chase because Colorado we had uh, is it 2016? We had a fire go go and and I was in the truck and I saw the fire come over the mountain and I had to go over the road <laughs> and. Uh, what the fires do to people's lungs and stuff. I think I think fire fires might be and fires can be unexpected like a tornado too. I think I think a fire, a forest fire, is probably worse than a tornado. Lots of people had to be evacuated. We only went to level one here, but the evacuation zone was less than two miles down the road. Yeah, that's nuts. Well, I, I seen, I follow the forest fires in California for years, and this last year, just the midday orange, it, it looked like the apocalypse. And Colorado had that too, and we had forest fires before, but just just seeing those photos, it's like wow, it's like. It looks like yeah, it looks like the end of the world. Maybe they're sensationalized a little bit, but it's uh, on top of everything else that happened this year. It's uh, looked pretty bad. Yeah, fires are a whole nother beast. Was, uh, could you see the flames from your house? You said you had to evacuate, right? Oh, lots of people had to evacuate. We only had level one. Like, were you, um, downwind from the smoke or was the smoke going in the opposite direction? Our air quality here was like three times, ooh, ooh, you couldn't see the sun, it was the closest thing to a living, living in hell I could imagine, just red and orange all around, ash falling from the sky like snow, yeah, I haven't been in, in one that bad, once I've been in, usually, like, I've been close to it, but the, uh, the wind was pushing pushing everything away. And I've seen the orange glow. Not as bad as what I've seen in photos this year from, from your guys' neck of the woods. I've only had a taste. That's, uh... How many days did the fire last? And I'm glad everybody's all right. Well, I'm assuming that. I don't know.
see, well, the problem was the wind that usually comes off of our coast and pushes west, but it was coming east instead, so the fire kept coming towards town, and the smoke stayed. Ugh, it's like an eddy. I guess his eyes are just crooked. This is always a trippy part. What is Photoshop locking on to? Okay. Let's see what happens when I do a color layer over that purple. I think I might have painted myself into a little hole with that purple. I mean, we could fix it. Before I get carried away fixing it, I want to see if the color layer isn't going to just fix it on its own. And we're going to take, oh, thank you, Windows. Yeah, I know, I press it on the phone. We're going to take creative liberties, probably, with the color, too. Yeah, see, so the purple definitely have to fix certain areas of the purple, but it's not imperative. Let's see. Yeah, that's 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 the plan. That's the plan. Yeah, all my web hosting and stuff came this month, and then my car battery crapped out, too. And so it's just like, well, everybody's getting art for Christmas. <laughs> That's the good thing about being an artist. It's just like, well, well you know, had a tragedy, so I guess, like, because uh, I want to I wanna paint a... Uh, um, other YouTubers, I started doing that, and I got a video coming out later in the week of the first one, and it's like, well, since since I hit a little snag on my on my fiduciary situation, we got we got to paint family because this is what everybody's getting for Christmas this year. <laughs> everybody's getting art. Okay, so let's uh, pull back this color a little bit. Now we'll get rid of this blue background. Let's try another background. Sometimes colors next to each other make colors look like, like it's like the black dress and the blue dress. 
Let's do kind of a green color. Yeah, this is this is where you get a get a stylize a little bit, like because I'm I'm not trying to duplicate the photo, I'm trying to make it make it my own. It's easier to duplicate it, because yeah, like you could see the darker tones in the hat. It was like my dad's got my fashion sense, like none of this matches. <laughs> I'm the same way. But when I when when I paint, it's like oh, let's deselect. It's like we can we can make stuff match. It's not reality. It's not fun. It's not fun being a photocopier. I got all respect for people who do that though. Like some people just amaze me. Let's see, that's actually really cool. Getting handmade gifts are better in my opinion. My dad makes a lot of gifts. What kind of stuff does he make? And my dad does woodworking. Uh, that might be too blue. Might have got crazy with the blue. Let's go darker blue. Uh, it's darker still. I'm gonna wind up with the exact color of the t-shirt to watch. <laughs> Let's see. He makes bowl flutes. Oh, awesome. He even works with gems and hides. Lots of interesting things. Is is he up there in Oregon as well? Very close to family up there. Yep, look at that. I just went with the same color. <laughs> he made me a bowl a couple of years ago. Yeah, he lives. Yeah, that's awesome. That's good to hear. He's a, a good company. Yeah, my dad, um, he makes cutting boards, and uh, he made chess sets. He made, oh, he's he's built a couple of wooden kayaks, two of them. And what else? He made me an awesome uh, art box. It's an art box slash evil. Which I use when I go on the road. I don't have enough space to give you the full tour of it. I definitely would. Nice. Woodworking is really fun. Sounds like he passed down some of the artistic blood. Yeah, he's more, he's definitely artistic. He's craftsman artistic. Um, I'm thinking about getting into the, the woodworking. I haven't done too much, but I get the feeling, you know, it, it'll happen. He's, he's uh, pretty mathematical and precise, whereas I'm more... Uh, of an instinctual shooter. 
you know, like, like for me measuring and, and cutting and getting things like, like the hardest thing for me is hanging a picture and making it, you know, level. I'm doing this just so the thumbnail. Normally I do this later because I have the purple outline um, for my thumbnails and stuff. I want to have a presentable thumbnail is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, we're going to do this layer a bunch of times. But what's really neat about this in Photoshop is that if I wanted to, Say I wanted to give them a red hat. I could just like that, switch it up. Now he's got a red hat. And you could try different things and see what works. That is the neat thing about digital painting. Let's see. I'm dad loves fishing as well. well. Who doesn't? Who doesn't like fishing? I'm a late I'm lazy at fishing though. Like I like to go fishing, but the actual fishing part, like I'm usually like messing around with my camera and taking pictures and dropping GoPros in the water and drinking beer. <laughs> You know, I, I cast a lot a couple of times and it's but it's like okay it's like let's let's explore. I'm impatient but I do enjoy it. Especially when I catch something. Rare event I catch something. What's funny too is I got bad luck with fish. Like what was it we were bass fishing and we we're in kayaks and he's catching you know these big bass and stuff and you know i'm just drinking beer and just kind of plopping around and all of a sudden i feel a bite and grab and i start start re reeling it in and then i think it get, gets away so it's like okay i'll just pull this in and come up and i see this huge mouth and i was like oh my goodness it was like i got one i got one and so they, gets closer and closer. I pull it up. It was like the Simpsons, the three-eyed fish. I pull this bass out and it had a head like that bass, but it had like a little minnow body. Like its head was twice the size of its body. It was a mutated fish. It was a freak of nature. And it's just like, yep, yeah, this is a, it was a Bobby Hill moment is what I like to call it. <laughs> Let's see what that green hat actually looks like in the paint. Yeah, I think I I think I like the blue. Warp reality a little bit here. Alright, let's see about this. What's great is the color layer for, for the dog. The Jack Russell. <laughs> it's, it's, this dog is literally just black. There's a little bit of the sun reflection in there, but oh yeah, it's just got a little brown spot right there. We'll get to that later. The dog certainly makes it easy. I still got work on his smirk. He still, my version still looks like 
I just caught a fish. Rawr. <laughs> Yar. I'm definitely going to take a lot of creative liberties with the bass. As far as color goes. I really want those greens to pop. You notice know, I made uh, I made the bass just, just a little bit bigger. Yeah, because... What you tell people you catch is it's always just a little bit bigger than what would uh, what you actually get, you know. It's like when you catch the fish, it's this big. When you get for the car, it's this big, and by the time you get home, it was this big. That's the fun thing about fishing. I've done, uh, I've done also, I've done some deep sea fishing, kingfish. I haven't. I want to go. I want to go for mackerel one of these days. Or mackerel. <laughs> it's like I want to go bluegill fishing. No, I I meant to say I want to fish marlin. <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> Yeah, one of these days I'm gonna get me the biggest blue girl I ever seen. Ah, it's old. <laughs> I don't know, I don't keep track. Could couldn't tell you. He's older than me. I know that. <laughs> he's he's been around a few more years than I have. What did I do? I messed up. So the cool thing about the color layer is now, now I know underneath on the gray layer I need to go darker here and darker here and darker here and darker there darker here See what the other background color looks like. How long we've we been streaming? Two and a half hours. I will be right back. I think I'll go another half hour. Did he catch this right behind its house? No, no, we were at a buddy's house. I think we were at my uncle's house. Or he was at the uncle's house, but yeah. I'll be right back.
Oh, yeah. Yes. A lot of people have that luxury. They chase you off. We got little bridges, and you could kind of park on the bridge. You, they'll let you. You're not supposed to. They'll leave you alone for about 40 minutes, and then uh, the police will chase you off. But they'll pass you a couple of times, and you know, kind of try to drop hints. And after about 40 minutes, they'll be they're like, "You gotta go." Uh, uh, sometimes there's there's empty lots where there isn't a house. You can kind of there's like cover bushes. You can kind of sneak in there and, and get away with on empty lots, which, which is what I'll do sometimes. But a lot of times it's not worth the hassle because you know neighbors. But yeah, we have we have water all around. That's what's fun. it was fun is like you know you can you can fish fresh water and within twenty minutes you're fishing salt water. You know, and that includes, you know, packing everything up, getting in the car, driving five minutes to salt water, and then fishing salt water. And it's like there's a lot of brackish water too, so all sorts of stuff happens. You get, you know, dolphins and shark. Everything comes around to eat the freshwater stuff. We got flying fish. All sorts of craziness happens. And then you get into the Everglades. You get like Legends of the Skunk Ape. <laughs> Florida is crazy because, like, what is it in the 70s? Down in the Keys, we got this place called Monkey Island. And this guy had an island of monkeys, and then he just he abandoned it. And uh, nobody can go to the island because the monkeys will kick you off. The monkeys are hostile to anybody that, because they they did experiments on the monkeys. Mon it's like Planet of the Apes. It's like if you try to boat to the island, they like throw stuff at you. Yes, I've had tarpon on the line, but I haven't been able to pull one in. Tarpon are freaking wild. Yeah, it's kind of like some of the saltwater fishing. Like when I went to Colorado, I fished trout, and I had my saltwater rod, and and I caught a trout, and I was like, "What is it?" And I pull it up, and it is a large trout. It was a big trout. <laughs> it's like <laughs> after. After you you know you know fish in the sea and you go to you know river trout you know the the thrill is gone. <laughs> oh yeah, they get they get huge. And then in the Keys, if you ever come back to Florida, you would stop in Key Largo. There's signs for it. I forget the name of the place, but you would see it driving down the the main road. Where um, there's this dock in this restaurant where you can you pay like twenty bucks and you can feed tarpon right off the dock. You look it up on YouTube. There's there's crazy videos. People feeding the tarpon and and they're huge too. And that's definitely fun, cause you like lay on the dock, just hold the bait fish right over and. and like, you don't even drop it in the water. They come out of the wa water and snatch it out of your hand. And it's... That's kind of scary. Like, they're very, you know, assertive about it. They're like, this is my fish. Because there's like... There's usually like eight of them. And, you know, the ones circling around times it just right. They get it. So they're all competing. Oh, yeah. It's, it's neat. Especially seeing kids react. Kids flip out. Uh, we'll go 
the Skyline Collection. The Tetris is a little much for this time of evening. Too much of that, I won't be able to sleep. Oh yeah, this would be real cool. So I turned off the color layer, right? And I darken this area up. And then when I turn it on, it should be a deeper blue. And what we had. Let's check it out. Wham! And then if I was really wild, I could work underneath of it. But the problem is, is I'll wind up selecting a color and then putting colors on my... Uh, values layer and then then you get in trouble we'll walk on the wild side for a few minutes oh i already went to select the color see i select color so fast it's just like I'll probably do this color layer a few times. I just want to get something presentable for the thumbnail, which we'll make right now. Oh, that's cool. So that's how you do, that's some graphic design stuff right there. Let's get this right here like this. Get kind of an off-white. What's that full potential? Let's try a full white. I don't know if you can see that. I'm there. Yeah, you can't really see it. But it's black color. You can make it like if it was darker, you can make a t-shirt out of it. Let's let's try this. Hey, you can make a if you clean that up, you make a logo out of that. That right there. Okay, what do we got to turn off? Let's set that off. Get this off. You select. Windows chirp at me. What? I wish it would stop doing that. It chirps at me and then it lets me do my thing. It's like, it was, uh, what's the point of that, guys? What's, what's really going on here? The artifact is bad. Okay, that that's gonna drive me nuts, man. And turn off the background music so you don't keep hearing that ding, and I can enjoy that by myself.
Then we go export. Awesome. Now we get our music back. Yes, that's not bad. Probably two more sessions left. Maybe one. Oh yeah, probably one, because, let's see. Okay, so tomorrow I'm going to be on Twitch, and I'm going to be designing a t-shirt for my Patreon. And then... Third... Man, I had this all planned out. What am I going to do on Thursday? Thursday I'm painting something. Uh oh, is this a, ah Photoshop's locked up. Yes, Twitch tomorrow. I think I just like because I got a lot of art friends on Twitch, and I'm thinking Wednesdays Wednesdays on Twitch, um, for design and maybe painting. If I if I don't have anything to design, I'll paint. Uh, oh yeah, I, I call it Wild Card Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna keep my seat warm on Twitch. You know, just in case. Just in case. And then Thursdays. What did I, I... I got it written down somewhere. I'm pretty sure I'm back here on Thursday. Painting. Oh, yeah. Thursday, just like photo bash. Or that's where I like compile photos. And then Friday, Friday, see if these. If you want to crew up on Friday, that would be cool. Unless, uh... Oh, that's Boom's plan. And then, uh, Saturday, Saturdays during the day, I'll paint. And then, if I have time, I'll do gaming in the evenings. But I kind of have, have goals on the art. And if I don't meet them, gaming gets canceled on Saturdays. But probably we'll game this Saturday, because I've been getting a lot done this week. AG2. And then Sundays, I pretty much work on editing video and work on larger projects, and I don't stream. And then some days I'll get burnout and probably, you know, because eventually it all catches up. It's usually pretty random. But occasionally I'll just, I'll just take a day off because I'm too demanding on myself. Awesome. Now let's pull up. Do, 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 do. Well, let's uh, save this before the computer explodes. Now we're going to open recent. What? Which one? What's the one that said Art Cats? Let's try this guy. Uh, well, I'll stop by, hang out a bit tomorrow. Right on. Hey, I appreciate you hanging out tonight, man. That's, that's two nights of in, in a row. Makes it go by quick. What was... None of these are the ones I want. Okay, live. Angler's Assistant PSP. Ah, here we go. Let's grab that, 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 that. Arts work. Wrong artwork. OBS. No, wrong. Angler's assistant. There we go. G2. <laughs> Grab this background guy. 
You too, TJ. Appreciate you stopping by. Grab the alt, and where is the new one? Paging two, it's way up there. This guy's a sec, get turned off. And this. Art, cast. We'll see. That's a lot. I'm live on YouTube. Turn that off. So I think, what time is it? I was working on midnight. So I'm going to try to wake up at 6 to film the voiceover. And I am going to wrap it up. If anybody's still out there, I appreciate you stopping by or anybody watching this in the future. Be the best you that you can be. Take it easy.